Let's go on to our speakers. We have um, we have Kylie and Wilson and Holly Short, and they're both from Florida Audubon, and they have been our primary contacts. And, and Kylie is on our beaches in particular in our county. And I would really, I'm really happy that they both could do this presentation. We've had some wild times with birds as well. So Kylie, I am going to introduce you and let you go forward with your presentation. Happy All right, I'm, I'm gonna bring it up and share it. Let me just get it going here. Yes, they're from another location, just so you all know. Let me see how I do this back here. Thanks, Catherine and Bob and Margaret. Hi, everybody. Hi, hey, guys. <laughs> all right. Share screen. Snowy pluffers. Go and let's see if that works. Okay, there you go. Okay. Oh, that looks one. good. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So yeah, my name is Kylie Wilson and I am the Beach Nesting Shorebird Stewardship and Monitoring Coordinator for Audubon, Florida here locally in Sarasota County. And so that includes Siesta Key, that is um, my territory. And on Siesta Key, historically we've had that picture which showed a snowy plover. That's one of our state threatened species um, and the main species that we see nesting on our Siesta Key beaches. So now you can click it. So I'll go over um, mostly the snowy plover, but I am gonna talk a bit about all of the focal species just so that you guys are familiar. But again, snowy plovers are really the main um, bird that you'll see nesting out on Siesta Key. This is what the posted areas are mainly protecting on Siesta Key. And this is the snowy plover. They are undeniably adorable. Um, they're a very small shorebird and as a shorebird that makes them um, solitary nesters. So it's just a male and a female and they defend a small territory of nesting and foraging habitat from other snowy plovers. They nest a little bit earlier than the other shorebirds and seabirds in our area. So they are actually already nesting now. Their nesting season officially starts, I think per FWC standards, February 15th um, or March 1st, we had them getting ready like late February and uh, pairing up and stuff all throughout this last month. And very excitingly, I did just find my first nest of the season yesterday on Siesta Key. So you can go ahead and click. So when I say that they defend their territory, I mean they defend their territory from other plovers. As cute as they are, they are aggressive and they do not like to share their space. So this is a fabulous photo from a uh, volunteer and photographer, Lou Newman getting that territorial display. So we only have so many, maybe um, 10 on the key and they uh, do spread out along, along the Northern area because they don't share territory. This here is a picture of a snowy plover that's actually nesting. This was on Siesta Key a couple of years ago. And so really what it looks like is a bird sitting in some grasses on the sand. Um, and that's kind of what it is. So if you can go to the next slide. This is what we call a scrape, and it really doesn't look much different than a footprint from, uh, you know, an untrained eye. And essentially, the male snowy plover will dig a series of these scrapes, and then the female decides, you know, which one she likes. She uh, tells him this is the one. They decorate it with little bits of egg or um, little bits of shell, rather, and then it becomes a nest when she lays an egg in it. So you can go ahead and click to the next slide. So I'll give you guys a minute here, well, a couple seconds anyways, to see. Oh, you got it. Yep. So go ahead and click. That is the egg right there in the scrape. Um, and really these nests, their whole idea is to be completely camouflaged. Um, snowy plovers get their name from their white coloration and they blend in so excellently with the snow white sand that we have on our Gulf Coast beaches, Siesta in particular. And their eggs are also designed to be very camouflaged. So you can click the next slide. This is actually a bird sitting on that exact um, egg. So when you see a posted area and you don't see a bird inside of it, that's kind of the point. They don't want to be seen. They want to blend in and go unnoticed. And you can go ahead and go to the next one. And I think this is a video. You can click play. This is uh, one of our snowy plovers that we have regularly nesting on Siesta. She's got some bands on her legs. You can see she's got a green and a white band. And that's how we know who she is. We call her Miss Sanibel. And that's because she was um, hatched in Sanibel and banded there by a biologist. And you see that's her sitting on her nest. It's 
very much just a little uh, cup in the open bare sand. So Siesta Key is kind of interesting. We see snowy plovers nesting in, um, you know, more vegetated areas, but they could nest just right out in the open. Um, the beach is, is their nursery. The beach is their nesting habitat. And they take advantage of what they can find. So you can go to the next slide. And after about, you know, 24 to 28 days, you get chicks um, and they are even cuter. It's ridiculous. They're like little cotton balls on toothpicks. And so the interesting thing about snowy plover chicks is that they're considered precocial, which means that they are highly mobile very quickly after they hatch. Just as soon as their little down feathers dry off, they can run and they can feed themselves. Um, they can go miles from where they originally hatched. So if we are fortunate enough to have a uh, snowy plover chick on Siesta Key Beach, it becomes kind of just a constant game of where is the chick and where did it run off to? And that's how it goes for the parents to the um, snowy plover. Female will often leave after the chicks hatch and say, okay, dad, it's your turn. You do all the taking care of them now. And the dad just has to chase the chicks around and keep them out of trouble. You can go ahead and click. This is a chick that's a little bit older, and this is actually a chick that we had last season on Lido Key. Um, this was one nest out of, I believe, 10 that hatched last year. We only had one nest hatch. It hatched on Lido, two chicks, and one ended up making it. This one is probably about two to three weeks old. And so you can click to the next one. And this is that same chick at what we call fledging. So um, it is now a flight capable chick. We had the same biologist from Sanibel come up to help us band it because that helps us a lot to know what happens to these birds after they leave the beaches. Unfortunately, um, a few weeks after we had this chick banded, it was found dead and we got a uh, bird biops or bird necropsy done. It was kind of inconclusive. Basically it had um, died from malnutrition or um, just hadn't eaten enough. So that was odd to me because I watched it eating all the time. Um, you know, we can't say for sure, but I have a feeling there was some sort of bacterial issue. But anyways, the uh, positive spin on that is that we had a chick hatch and that was the first chick to hatch in Sarasota County since 2016 and it hatched off of Lido Key. So I'll just go over quickly our other birds. Some of you guys may be familiar with the black skimmer. That's this bird here. And um, they are our resident on Lido Key but they winter on Siesta Key. So as funny as it is that they nest on Lido and they've had a nesting colony on Lido for the last uh, six years, I think, our main breeding group will go and winter on Siesta Key. So they don't go very far. And actually it's just about that time of year where they start moving from Siesta for their winter um, you know, location to their breeding location on Lido. I had about 240 of them on Lido this morning. And yeah, that chick will eat that entire fish whole. It's really entertaining to watch. <laughs> okay, next slide. And the least terns, these are the um, other more common species we have locally. They are also a colonial spe species. So like the black skimmers, they nest in a group. Um, we do have a successful colony of beach nesting least terns on Lido Key as well. And they also are well known for nesting on gravel rooftops in Florida. I believe over 80% of these terns in Florida nest on rooftops. And basically they've found that gravel rooftops are a suitable alternative to beach nesting habitat since beaches are being eroded and um, you know, very highly used. They've kind of been able to adapt. But we are fortunate to have a ground nesting colony on Lido. And I think both um, least terns and skimmers nested on Siesta many years ago. But um, more recently, they've been seen on Lido and um, Longboat for the least turns too. So next slide. Oops, and sorry. just oh, no worries. So just to show you guys, this is an American oyster catcher, a very striking bird. It looks kind of like a skimmer, but it's a shore bird. So right. like the snowy plover, it nests as just a solitary pair. We don't really see them nesting on our beaches locally, although they certainly could. Um, they do nest up north in Pinellas County. So if you guys see a couple of these on Siesta, immediately give me a call because I'm very curious to know what they'd be up to. Um, I, I would love for one to nest here, but they just don't really seem to. And the next slide. 
similarly with the Wilson's plovers. So these are a little uh, larger than the snowy plovers, a little darker, and they've got this thicker bill. And they are technically not a state designated species, but um, we do monitor them very closely because they are, you know, um, very similar to our other beach nesting species and have similar um, vulnerabilities as far as habitat and um, disturbance goes. So it's a lot of legs under there. Hiding <laughs> <laughs> some little ones in there. Yeah, that's what we call brooding. It's uh, really fun. <laughs> yeah, six-legged bird. So I'll just go over quickly what the area on Siesta Key is that we mainly see nesting. So if you could click it twice for me. Yep. So that's really the main um, nesting area on Siesta Key. We mostly see snowy plovers nesting between accesses 11 and four, so the north half of the key. Every year we maybe get one nest south of the public beach, but almost all of our nesting is on this north end. And so if you look, you see a lot of grass. Um, that grass has grown in pretty substantially, which has taken up a lot of the uh, you know, former suitable habitat. And then all of that white sand is, um, you know, interspersed with public accesses. So there's a lot of recreational use of this habitat. But somehow the snowy plovers managed to keep trying and they like that upper beach area where like the grass kind of ends and turns into beach and there's sparse bits of vegetation. So I normally try to explain to people that during this time of year is not where you wanna walk um, because they are scraping and um, you might inadvertently disturb a bird that's in the process of getting its nest going. And Kylie, that's where my house is, right here. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, well, then so, you are smack dab in the middle of it. Yeah, so one of these days, if you ever need anything, please stop by. Or if I, because that's where I go out, right at that heart, that's where we have what's between beach access 10 and 9. So, oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I've had some scraping of access 10, so definitely keep an eye out. Okay. Um, okay. And so if you'll click one more time. So this star is an area that we call the CF property or the Conservation Foundation. It's um, just between the Tivoli access area and access 11. Right. And that area is owned by the Conservation Foundation of the Gulf Coast. And they gave us permission to pre-post an area for snowy plovers every season. And it goes up right at the beginning and stays up all season long, basically just to give the birds a small smidge of habitat where um, you know, there's no disturbance. Unfortunately, this uh, last couple of weeks during spring break, we've had almost consistent vandalism of the area. And um, there was a, a pair that was trying to scrape. Um, I put some cameras out. I did in fact find out that it was um, spring breakers, several groups of um, college age kids, it seemed that had been drinking. Um, so it's, it's hard to try and, you know, pin that on somebody or get enforcement to get somebody for that. But I'm going to be giving you guys some resources. So if you guys see anything suspicious, be sure to, um, you know, report it. And hopefully with spring break dying down, things will um, kind of go back to normal and settle down a bit. So go ahead. And yes, um, as I was saying, you know, these birds, they are protected species. That's Miss Sanibel in the uh, top left picture there, our resident star snowy plover on Siesta Key. So because they are a state threatened species, they do have uh, legal protections through this state statute. And basically what it says is no person shall take. And when you break down what take means, you can go to the next slide. Take um, includes, you know, several verbs, but harassing and harming are two of the main ones. And when you break down what those definitions mean, harming, you know, doing something intentional and, um, you know, stepping on the eggs or killing a bird, for instance, and then harassing, I think is one that people don't really recognize. Um, doing something that may annoy the wildlife or disrupt, disrupt the wildlife to the point where they're no, not doing their normal breeding behavior. So for instance, that could be chasing through a flock of black skimmers, or that could be walking a dog past a snowy plover nesting enclosure because your dog is disturbing the bird off the nest. So those are actually activities that are harassing the bird and then you are actually committing take and that is actually a finable offense according to the statute. So when you see a posted area, it's just really important to try and recognize what um, possible disturbances you might be causing to the birds and avoid them at all costs. And if you see anybody disturbing the birds, please by all means report it to FWC. This is their um, wildlife alert hotline and they are open, I believe, 24-7. You can also report online or um, text or email. 
And I think this is being recorded, so hopefully you guys will have access to this um, at a later date. And um, if you have something that you think needs to be reported to local law enforcement, um, feel free to call them after reporting to FWC. FWC really is the primary agency for any violations to the wildlife, but um, you can see the non-emergency number. Um, you may feel free to reach out to them if there's something uh, that's really bad going down with the birds. So just some tips on how you guys can help. Um, I mentioned, you know, that these birds are very vulnerable to disturbance. And unfortunately, it's just a fact of being a ground nesting bird on a public busy beach. Um, a lot of things could possibly disturb these birds from walkers to joggers, like I said, in that upper vegetated area. Um, my job is to find the nest and rope it off before somebody walks or jogs on it, but I'm only out there so often. So it helps to have people be in the know and um, you know, be on the lookout. Of course, predators, um, you know, there's not always something that we can do. Uh, predators are a natural issue, but we also kind of have the human exacerbated populations of some predators. So knowing like not to feed the wildlife and not to leave trash on the beach because that attracts those crows, that attracts those gulls that are um, potential predators for the eggs and chicks. Beach toys and drones. Oh, I'm gonna stay there for a second. Sorry. No worries. Um, so beach toys and drones, the issue with that, and I think people don't even think about it, is a lot of these things mimic predators. So a kite flying over a snowy plover enclosure, casting a shadow down in the enclosure, to them, that could be a potential avian predator. To you, you're just flying a kite. So, you know, recognizing uh, the potential effects of what seems like, a, you know, trivial behavior actually could impact the birds. And that you know goes along with walking dogs on the beach, fireworks, loud noises, bicycles, driving too fast, especially if we were to have chicks, um, could be a very dangerous issue. And a little bit more on the dog issue. So I know you guys touched on this earlier and I uh, sent a message in the chat. I do have some no dog signage from uh, FWC that I'm planning to post on areas where we have nesting. So um, you know, hopefully, that will help do some education before people get out to the beach. But um, even a leashed dog, even a service dog, if it is going past a nesting area and causing disturbance, it is not allowed to be there. And technically uh, the you know, ordinances here, Siesta Key Beach, you are not allowed to have dogs on the public areas. Now there's been some sort of debate over what parts of Siesta are public and private. And although, you know, you may have private beach, that aside, if the dog is disturbing a nest, it is still committing take, and then you are responsible for that. So um, during nesting season, it's really just important to stay aware of where the nesting areas are. Like I said, you know, this whole north end of the key is prime nesting habitat. Well, as prime as the birds can find on siesta these days. So it's best to just avoid having dogs out there during the nesting season. And as I was saying before, you know, not all of our problems with birds are humans. We do have natural issues with predators. Crows are the number one predator that we see on Siesta Key, but those crows are in Siesta, at Siesta in such large numbers, largely because of their ability to adapt to urban environments. You know, they do really well in places where people are because there's lots of trash and there's lots of food. And when you have people feeding the birds, that attracts those birds to nesting areas. So. I always try to educate people about, you know, removing your litter and not feeding birds. A couple more photos of some of those regular um, predators that we might have, the crabs, even fire ants can eat snowy plover eggs. Unfortunately, um, snowy plovers are just so vulnerable at so many levels. Um, yes, kitty cats are super cute, but they're best inside because they do kill things for fun. And if you have an outdoor cat at the beach, I implore you to try and turn it into an indoor cat because they could be a threat to the birds. Which, next slide. This is actually a cat that I caught on a game camera in one of our snowy plover nesting enclosures last year. So, um, you know, your outdoor cat goes for a little walk about at night and it could potentially eat a snowy plover egg. So, as adorable as they are, I have a cat myself. I love him very much. So yeah, to wrap it up for you guys, um, the status of snowy plovers on Siesta Key, 
historically, snowy plovers have done well on siesta key. I mean, they've been nesting on the key for decades, but in the last few years, they have had no success. Um, since 2018, there's been at least 25 documented nests and not a single one has hatched. And a lot of that is, again, a result of predation and disturbance. And predation and disturbance do go hand in hand. If you have a disturbance that causes the bird to leave the nest, the crows, which are incredibly intelligent, see the bird leave the nest, find the nest, eat the eggs. So, um, you know, doing all that we can on our front to help educate the beachgoers, to be educated ourselves. Um, like I said, if you see something, report it. Um, that's, that's really the best thing that we can do. And hopefully we can turn the situation around on Siesta Key for these birds so that they can once again be successful there because they were successful there for so long. That was wonderful. And yes, we will have a copy of this in the um, uh, videos that we uh, show after the meeting. So they'll be available online so people can get your numbers off of them. Wonderful, yeah. There's some additional contact info and stuff um, on the next couple slides, but- Right, I, I didn't see I it come up. I, I pressed down because I thought it, I would see it, but I don't know why it's not coming up. Maybe it's not there. Maybe yeah, that well, was a different presentation yeah. I had, but basically the um, yeah. the yeah. number for the report for the hotline is is the best number for you guys. And then my personal phone number, which I'll throw in the chat. Um, I'll put my email in the chat. And then, you know, if anyone finds anything or has anything that they're alarmed about, by all means, reach out to me. I thought I saw them. So I will take your information and put it in one of my slides. So it'll be available before my presentation starts. Thank you so much, Kylie. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. Well, thank you, Kylie. If anyone wants to help learn about this, they can contact you, right? Absolutely. We are always looking for volunteers. Like I said, we have a nest. It's Easter weekend. Um, yeah, fingers sure. crossed it'll make it through. Uh, but, you know, if you're interested in volunteering, by all means, let me know. Thank you.